face of the current coronavirus outbreaks, we are all concerned about the consequences of this disease. And what is everyone looking for? A vaccine that can stop the spread of this illness. However, and th people would imagine that once there is a vaccine, everyone would actually take it without any hesitation. However, we as human beings are not always logical when it comes to our decisions. We, our brains are subject to emotions, cognitive biases that impact our ability to take ra rational decisions and results in irrational decisions. Just to illustrate this, I'd like you to have a look at this cube. Try to look at these two pieces. Do you see the same color or different colors? Who sees the same color? Raise your hand if you do. If you see the same color. Okay. Who sees different colors? Okay, almost everyone. And unfortunately, all of you are wrong. They are identical, exactly the same colors. It's unbelievable. You look at it on and on again. And in case you're concerned that I've photoshopped this, I haven't. I actually have two screenshots of these two pieces. They are identical. Yet our brain fails to see them as, as being the same. Why? Due to the context. So if we are actually subjected to these biases when it comes to looking at colors, something very objective, imagine how our decisions are influenced by biases. So let's move on to talk about a different virus now, the measles virus. Measles is actually more contagious and more serious and lethal compared to coronavirus. It spreads so quickly, and prior to vaccines, prior to the availability of vaccines, measles was the leading cause of death, of childhood death. It's good that we now have very effective vaccines that wor work extremely well. As you can see from this example in, uh, that, that took place in Wales and England, once you introduce the, 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 the vaccine, measles rates go extremely low. We have the ability to completely eradicate measles. Now, the question is, were we successful in eradicating measles? We do have very effective vaccines. However, we haven't. In 2018, there were 140,000 deaths from measles. Not people infected, people died from measles, despite the availability, the availability of these effective vaccines. So what is the reason? One, is the, one of the reasons is that there is a mental virus that spreads prior to the actual virus and leads to uh, measles. So let's start with a, with a story from a country in the Pacific uh, Ocean, Samoa. Samoa is a beautiful country, and in 2019, August, as we can see here, they had zero cases of measles. In September 30th of 2019, there was only one case. One person had measles. What happened following this, by December, there were more than 5,500 people infected by measles just in this country, making up to 2% of the total population. It's really scary how fast this disease can spread. Was it a benign disease? Not at all. More than 80 people died from measles within the short time frame. And guess what? Most of them were unfortunately children. So this is a really serious disease. And as we can see in this illustration, what happened is that measles started to spread, let's say, around the end of 2019. But prior to this, there was a mental virus that started spreading. There were people, actually, who started scaring, frightening parents and, and telling people, convincing people that vaccines as, as part of an agenda to infect their, their population and it's a crime against the citizens and they started scaring people from vaccines and actually giving them alternatives including taking vitamins, for example, or papaya leaves or even immune protective water, whatever this means. So there were really uh, other strategies that are not effective and people were scared, the vaccination rates went down, and therefore measles actually started and increased. Another quick example from the Somali population of Minnesota in the US. What happened? Sometime, not long ago, a strong person who's an anti-vaxxer visited Minnesota, the Somali population, and convinced them that the reason for the autism rates they had was actually because of the vaccination, which is absolutely not correct. But what happened to people? They were afraid, they were scared. Therefore, they started 
decrease, not vaccinating their children. So the vaccination rate actually went down. And what would happen consequently, as we showed, measles is highly contagious and dangerous, so the rate of measles went up quickly, making up maybe the, 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 the largest, the biggest outbreak of measles in the, in the US recently. And this is the global rate. So the question is, why do these ideas or mental viruses spread? How are they made up? We know, we know a lot about the measles vac virus and about vaccines, but what makes up these viruses, the mental viruses that actually are implemented in people's brains and heart and then move to, from one person to the other, causing fear and, and reluctancy and, and hesitancy in vaccinating? This will be the topic today. Vaccine hesitancy has been labeled by the WHO as one of the top 10 public health problems Again, it's one of the biggest challenges to public, public health. It's not the measles or the, the, the virus itself, it's the hesitancy to, to take vaccines. I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist from the United Arab Emirates, and I work in Dubai, and I'm privileged to work with families and children with autism spectrum disorder. One of the things that is striking is that I've noticed in the UAE and where I, where I was trained in Canada and everywhere else in the world when we travel and, and, and present conferences is that there are the same ideas and theories rela related, to fact, related to autism that keep coming up. So one of the frequent questions we, we're asked almost every time we, we meet with these families, does my child have autism because of vaccines? Now we know the answer is unequivocally no. We have strong evidence that there is no link. But why does this wrong idea persist in people's mind and lead to vaccine hesitancy. So parents love their children. It's a natural tendency for parents to protect their children, to provide their love and compassion to their children. And it's, it's a feeling across all species. So even vaccine hesitant parents, actually they're hesitant. They do not vaccinate their children out of their love because they think that this is the best thing to do to protect their children. So it's out of their love and compassion for their children. So what we're going to talk today about is how can we understand more about this virus and how it spreads, how it makes itself to people's minds and brains and heart and, 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 and spread from one person to the other and across continents. In order to do this, I'd like you to engage with me in an, in an exercise where we're going to use our cognitive empathy. So let's try for the next few minutes to put ourselves in the place of, of those people who actually promote anti-vaccine agenda. So, Ladies and gentlemen, here is your 10-step guide, your secret recipe to create and spread mental viruses. Okay, so let's start. Step one, you have to come up with a pseudo-scientific idea. So come up with any idea. It just has to sound scientific, even if it had absolutely no credibility at all. It doesn't matter. Come up with numbers from your pocket, from here and there, present slides, just make up something that sounds scientific. Step two, you have to believe in your idea to the core and consistently repeat your idea one time after the other. What happens, people are, they have a lot of biases, as we saw earlier. So when they hear about an idea repeating, they end up believing it. it becomes, they become familiar with this idea. And also, there is the, the fire hosing effect. If you made up a, a very wrong idea and if you lied about it, if you just keep repeating it on and on and on again, people will end up believing it. Step three, use stories. Stories are much more powerful than numbers and statistics. And there are some important characteristics in the stories that you should use, which is you have to, you have to use emotional stories. So you have to tap into their fears and make them really scared. So you can show them, for example, before and after photos of vaccine injury, regression, terrible consequences of va vaccines. And this, th this is how you can install fear in people. And then guilt. Guilt is very, very powerful. So no parent wants to feel, to feel guilty about something that they do for their kids. So one thing you can do, you can make parents feel really guilty if they vaccinate their kids. And then you, uh, your, your way to spread this idea would be through using empathy. Empathy is a very powerful tool. But there is one key, uh, key idea here when using empathy, which is focus on one story one single individual when you apply the pre previous concepts. So one story, a specific child or individuals, people can, identif can actually identify with one person, they can empathize with one person, 
but difficult uh, to empathize with two or three or 10 or million. And as one person previously said, if one person dies, it's a tragedy. If a million die, it's a statistic. And this is why our, our data that we have don't actually resonate and work uh, very well with, with, with these families. Next, and this is a bonus, use more biases. So, for example, these parents are desperate to have uh, an idea about what caused autism in their kids. And, and, and scientists would tell them, well, we don't know for sure, it's 90% genetic, but we're still looking for ideas. And, and then you can actually use this and tell them, well, I have the reason. The reason is, what did you do right before your child had autism? Oh, tell me a few months before, and they say, oh, we took them for the vaccine. And automatically, people make this association. We are subjected, all of us, to their biases, and we think that they are actually causal. And then pay, play the nature card. So whenever you talk about something that's natural, this is very powerful. People perceive things that are natural as less harmful than things that, that, that are invented by human beings. So you can talk about natural immunity, for example, and, and frame it this way. So if you, if you, instead of talking about vaccinating your child and protecting your child versus subjecting your child to viruses, most parents will pick up the vaccines. But if you say that, oh, how about you either n develop your child's natural immunity, which is incorrect, but, but you can, again, it doesn't have to be correct. Develop your child's natural immunity, live naturally versus injecting your child with toxins. Who's going to select the second option? So this is the framing effect that, that is also powerful to be used. Number six, if you really want this to work, you need loyal followers. You need to create a movement. You need to be a rock star, really. You need to make sure that people who attend your presentations are loyal to your ideas and big believers. And in fact, if someone is hesitant and reluctant, you have to send them outside the room. Don't do it yourself. Have your other lo loyal followers send them out, basically. So you end up being surrounded by people who are big believers in your idea and will spread this further. And also, tell them always that you know something that no one else about. You know a secret that big pharma is hiding from them, that corporates are hiding from them, and that they're not going to hear this idea from anyone else. Tell them that autism is due to vaccines, but big pharma does not want to tell us and I'm going to tell you that, so, 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 and it's a big cover-up. As, 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 as ridiculous this idea is, you'll be surprised how it will actually resonate with a lot of people. And then raise money, but you have, it has to be discreet, so you have to show that you're doing this for the, for the good cause of people. And step eight is extremely important, get celebrities on board, very important. So if, when, you'll be shocked that celebrities actually have the spotlight and they can in this day and age go on TV and on, on television and, talk, and say whatever they want. They can just give their opinion and discredit the scientists and people would, are tempted to believe, believe in these celebrities because they're role models for many people. And then you have to go viral, literally go viral. Use the internet, create media that is with scary music, dark lighting, uh, really dramatic, uh, effective media, and use social media really effectively. Create hashtags, one after the other. More importantly, encourage your followers to create their own content, which is known as Web 2.0, through the comments, through creating new ideas, a new hashtag, a new, a new Twitter account, and this is a new social media account, and this way, your idea is re literally going to go viral. So now, congratulations. You're a rock star, you're famous, you have a lot of money, you have not only followers, but people who worship you. And this, there, there were studies that done, were done for these individuals, and, and their followers were described more or less as worshippers. So what's next? There's one last step. Maintain your success. Because there are people who will try to stop you. So you have to have good relationship with lawyers, because you'll need them in your fight against doctors, pharma, tech companies, etc. And make sure that your rhetoric, your story, your mental virus is alive and nourished and change your skin from one time to the other. So if, if anti-vaccine is, for example, not permitted on a specific social media pro platform, well, you can use parental choices, medical freedom, pro-health, any other title that, that actually works. Now what? The result is that this person is using ideas that resonate with people and actually tap into people's deepest fears and anxieties 
intentionally, and their cognitive biases intentionally. And this is why these ideas easily transmit from one person to the other. And once this happens, you cannot stop it. Measles, you cannot transfer measles online through email or social media, but vaccine hesitancy can go viral literally through social media. So these ideas would go on and on. What's the result? Decrease rate of vaccinations, as we saw, uh, eventually people actually dying of, of, of lethal, lethal diseases. So if we see vaccine hesitancy as the tip of the iceberg, and we have to definitely address this with love and empathy. These parents, again, they want their best for their children. So we need to listen to them, empathize with them. There are many research also that was done on using motivational interviews and also, also in including policies that support easy decision making that is supportive of, of protecting children and vaccinating their children. So our approach should be based on love and empathy. However, when it comes to the other question, which is what is below this vaccine hesitancy? Where do these, these ideas come from? Who is behind these ideas? Who is spreading these ideas? Should this, this be allowed or not? Our interventions should be very different and harsh and clear against those who actually produce and promote these ideas. Because, as we illustrated, these ideas can actually eventually kill people. And we should approach this with no hesitation. We should not hesitate in, in dealing with, with this. Through disrupting the flow of disinformation and fake news through, uh, on social media, and also educating parents and people that, look, I am subjected to all these biases. I can fall, them, fall for these biases or these ideas in, in one day, one way or the other, as well as all of us. TED is about ideas that are worth spreading. The ideas that we spoke about are terrible mental viruses that are not only not worth spreading, but are actually harmful and lethal and made for personal gains. And we should therefore collectively stand up to confront this deadly virus and face it dead on. If you now feel that you have a little bit more insight about the significance and importance of spreading these dangerous ideas, you, every one of you, and everyone who's watching online, you are uniquely positioned to enlighten people around you and contribute to a safer future for our children. Thank you very much.